Welcome to the tour of our wrecked boat. This is finally the video that you've been waiting for. Loads of requests. We're going to show you the tour of our wrecked boat. We cannot call it sinking anymore. Why? Because it's on land and it would be kind of odd if it was sinking now. We are going to keep this as straightforward as possible, walking around with a camera, explaining everything we see, what we want to do, what we won't do, what's good, what's bad, the things we love, the things we really don't love, and just show you everything we can. So let's get straight into this. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm MP. We love the ocean, so we decided to make it our home by buying a massive wooden schooner, which is unfortunately sinking. A lot of people believe our boat is doomed, but we refuse to settle on that thought, and we are willing to do whatever it takes to bring it back to its former glory. Join us on this refurbishing journey and wish us luck! This is the walkway which we have on each side of our boat. We love this. We love the size. We love how safe we feel on here with the wall on one side and the handrail. We're going to call this the house area or the housing on the other side. What we don't love about this is if you go down and come here with me, there are three things. In the bedrooms, we have lots of water infiltration, which comes from here, from around here, from here and probably some other places that we don't know. So once this has all been sanded down and inspected, we'll know what to fix and hopefully not have any more water inside. The next thing that we really don't like is our window system. I don't even know if you can call this a window system because these things are made out of very bendy plastic and can be removed very easily. We would like something slightly more secure for people with bad intentions and also something that can withstand some bad weather at sea. If you look around the side of the boat, you'll see that we are lacking the conventional clamps. Why is that? Because on schooners, we use this. We call it malaguetas. We have loads of holes around the side of the boat, and we can just put this, and they work as clamps. We can put fenders, we can moor, we can use them for everything. We can also remove those small ones, malaguetas, and replace them with this. These high ones, they are not that comfy to tie fenders, but they are really good to have in our tent. And the tent is very nice because it protects the whole housing from sun and rain. Here we are at the front of our boat. At the moment, it's a mess. Why? Because this room here is our storage room. But now, the main infiltration problems from seawater were coming from this area. So we're leaving it open and empty so we can get some fresh air and sun to dry it out. So now, that room is empty and now the mess is just here. So you can see our fenders, our hose, the spare anchor and so many other things. What I'm going to show now is something I really appreciate about the boat. This is our little helper for the anchors. It's actually not that little, it's a very big windlass. It's 2,300 watts and it's connected to our 24 volt system. This windlass has 100 meters of chain connected to a 50 kilos Bruce anchor. We also have here 220 meters of anchor rope connected to a Mexican anchor. At least that's how we call it in Brazil, a Mexican anchor. It's an anchor that's very good for storms. So this is the insurance of our boat normal anchorage and on this other side stormy anchorage as this is a very sunny and hot day i'm really excited to show you the next bit our bimini biminis are usually seen in the cockpit area ours is here on front and we know we're gonna use it loads. but yeah we really like it We have two masts made out of Pau Brasil, which is what gave Brazil its name. It's a very, very strong wood and lots of the old boats made like this didn't even have stays. That's how strong these masts are. These masts above the deck are about 12 meters, but have another one and a half, maybe two. I'd say anyway, they go down under the, under the deck, down to the keel. So these are very, very strong. This boat has four sails two of them on the front bow sprit, one of them connected to the front mast 
And the main sail. Okay, yeah. This boat has four sails, two of them connected to the brow sprit on a furling system, one of them connected to the front mast on a furling system, and we have one on a boom connected to the back mast, also connected to the furling system, which means they're very easy to roll and unroll from the deck or from the cockpit. Here I'm standing on the roof of our house. To be more specific, this is probably my side of the bed. <laughs> I'll show you later from the inside, of course. We believe the walls of our house are very rotten because we've seen some rot already, but the roof, from what we've seen, it looks very, very sturdy. So we believe the roof won't need to be changed, but yeah, we'll see. Let's climb the roof. Here you can see on our second mast we have our main sail with a boom. It's an aluminium boom connected to the mast and also with a furling system. Besides that, we also have five solar panels. Those two are connected to our 24 volt system and those three are connected with our 12 volt system. And here we also have the update mattress. It's the mattress of the bedroom that doesn't belong in the bedroom anymore because we're getting rid of it so it's just here for now <laughs> the last thing on our roof is the crib for the dinghy we can lift the dinghy from the water using the help of our room and then store it here we are keeping this for now ah the last detail Brazil Are you curious to see the inside? I know you are because we got so many requests, so let's go. That was the deck and the roof of our boat. Let's go to the cool area. The coolest area which we love the most out of this whole boat. And that is the area we spend most of our time. The saloon, the living room, the dining room, the spare bedroom, whatever you want to call this. This is the place we spend the most of our time. What we love about this is the space it offers. Under all this seating is just tons of storage. And most of all, have a look at this. MP, can you pass me the camera? We have a turning table, which is amazing for the size this table is. Under this table, we have a bunch of chairs, also very nicely made, very nice carpentry skills in there. Not only do we have a lot of storage under all this seating, we have some open storage, easily accessible under our anchor winches and our cleats. Speaking of anchor winches and cleats, this boat is very easy to sail with its system. All the sheets run straight to this area in the boat. They each have an individual cleat to fasten the sail all sharing one winch and then again we have these malaguetas again here is a nice example all it is is a simple wooden peg and there are loads of holes to slot them in around the boat and can be used to just slide some rope onto them to store them another example you can use these malaguetas for is literally exactly like a cleat and fasten a rope nice and tightly onto them. Surrounding this area, we have a bunch of curtains that roll up or down, which is very cool because we can let wind flow through here or block wind flow through here or block sun or just increase our privacy, which is also quite nice. Moving to the back of our boat, here we have this amazing swimming platform that in our case is not just a swimming, but also a diving platform. When we are on water, you can see the height is quite okay for a giant step. And yeah, we're really excited about this bit. Here we also have more storage that we can fit a lot of things. In the moment we have a lot of junk, but as you can see, they need to get fixed, right? Here we also have access to our rudder and this. This is probably our favorite thing about the boat. I mean, on the boat. Which is our hammock. 
it's very trustworthy and it's very comfy and we really like it for knives okay that was the boat tour we hope you enjoyed it <laughs> i'm kidding i know everyone is asking show the inside show the inside so now we're going to show the inside but first i want to talk about this very nice drawing we have on our door this is yaba exactly yaba this is itaparica island and this is salvador this is where yaba was made and also where it spent most of its years I don't know if we can still see it because it has faded because of the sun but here is the image of Yemanja. Yemanja is the queen of the sea and she takes care of fishermen and sailors so it's very very special to have her image here because we really feel that we are not alone. Okay, no more mystery, let's open it. Here is our navigation and 12 volt panel with the Belgian flag that's the opposite. Now it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> this Belgian flag was a gift from a couple that we met when we bought the boat and they were very, very nice to us. He is Belgium, Jacob, and she's Argentinian, Paula. And we had a great time together. And before leaving, they made the flag themselves and gave it to us. So it's very, very nice. We really, really appreciate this gift. This is something we really like about the boat. It's very complete and it's very nice and it's very prettily made. Not everything that's here is working, but at least we have the option to connect stuff to it. So, nice. Here we have our GPS. And also radar screen, which is very, very nice. It might not be the most modern one, but it does the job and we appreciate having it. Also here, another thing that I like, we have this sign with this phrase. I believe it means that luck follows those who are brave. I'm not sure that's the meaning. I hope it is because I like the phrase. <laughs> and here, how could I forget? We have our compass hidden here in this very cute French bonnet. Bonjour. <laughs> On this side we have, well, the control for the engine. Here, the windlass, we can control the anchor from here. 24 volt pump, it's also a flood alarm that's not working, but we can connect it here. This is the biggest mystery of our boat. Those are bow and stern thruster controllers. We have the controllers, they are not connected to anything and there is not a single sign or scar of a thruster in either places of the boat. So we don't know if they have ever been installed, but the controllers are still here. And those are more flicks that the only one that works is this one connected to the light of the engine room. If I move this stool out of the way, which is pretty amazing by the way, it's got a nice footrest, perfect seating position for the steering. I like to have a little cushion under my bum because, yes, <laughs> don't judge. Most of the time I end up standing anyway just because we end up going left, right, up, down, inside out, back to front. But if we move that out of the way, we have access to a 220 volt panel. There used to be two of these panels, if you think this is a lot. The second panel used to be over here, but that was just an abundance of overpowered electrical appliances. Something we really like about our boat is our steering wheel. It looks super nice, it feels super nice, and we really, really like this piece. And also, this is our autopilot. When we have our sails open, for example, to that side, of course the bow will tend to go in that direction. And in that case, we can use this autopilot system to try to bring the wheel a bit that side and compensate, and then we can follow a straight course. So it's very, very cool. This is our kitchen area. Actually, the official kitchen should be inside the house. But this has been our kitchen for the last months. We have here to cook 
here to do the dishes and that's been enough. We don't know what our plans are for the future. We don't know if we're going to bring the official kitchen upstairs or if we're going to build it again downstairs. Maybe you can help us giving us your opinion because we still didn't make up our minds about that. On this bit, this is our navigation table. The problem about this is when it rains, we get a lot of water coming from the window and it comes all the way inside the nav table. So we cannot really keep charts in here or anything that cannot get wet. Of course, we need to do something about it, but you can see that's a very humid place. When we are navigating and the door is open, we can use this to keep it on place. Ta-da! And it won't be open. Or if you want to shut it just a bit, you can bring it over here, which is also nice. And to not have the rail and the grease exposed, we can cover them with this very nicely made pieces of food. We didn't get the boat with this door, the official door was missing, but some very nice carpenters that we met made this for us to save us from mosquitoes one night, so we are very thankful for these pieces. That's it for the upstairs part, let's head downstairs and show the inside. First thing you notice when you come in is on your left you have some storage which is awesome to use for plates, cutlery, mugs and so on. Under you there is also some storage which is just some drawers under the stairs which we can store a bunch of stuff in and on the right is our inside kitchen. We are not sure if we're going to use the upstairs kitchen, continue using the upstairs kitchen or if we're going to convert to using this kitchen. We are not sure, let us know what you think. In this kitchen, what's a kitchen in the boat world? Galley, sorry. In this galley, kitchen, <laughs> galley, we have a massive sink with a lot of storage under it, on top of it, next to it, and so on. This used to be an electric induction stove with an oven underneath, which obviously isn't there anymore, and we're using the upstairs one. We have this massive 220 volt fridge converted into 12 volt and a washing machine which is epic. However, with our water infiltrations which come from the walls, the windows and the roof especially over here, some drops fell on the machine overnight or whenever and broke the machine. I think it short circuited. Oh well. Like we said on the outside, we know the state of our walls are not very good. All of these walls used to be covered with this white plywood which looks amazing even the roof was covered with it as well. The only problem is it was holding in a lot of humidity and when we bought this boat we pulled all this plywood off the side walls or the external walls to find a lot of rot as you can see and P got carried away taking out some rot which is good but we have a massive hole in the boat now. Okay, you guys can go stand on the stairs again because I'm gonna show you what else you can see when you come inside. So off you go. When you come in, you can also see the base of the mast. Well, which is almost the base of the mast because under our floor, it goes down a bit more even. What's amazing is we have some fresh water infiltration around the seal where the roof and the mast connect, but the mast is in an excellent condition. On your left, we have more storage, which is epic. We have so much space to store stuff. On the roof, you saw those massive hoses that belong to an emergency petrol pump. This is the beast. We have tried it before and it is like a fireman's hose when it chucks out water. Behind this, we have a wine fridge. MP and I are not very fussed about our wine. Cold white wine can just come from the fridge and a red wine can just be out of the fridge. So this is just taking up a bunch of space. Have a look in here. This is our most cozy room of the boat. 
When we arrived, this was all covered in plywood, which looks very nice. However, holds a lot of that moist together. And as we had some water infiltration coming in from the roof, this was never treated and the plywood just kept hiding it and hiding it and hiding it until all the rot had spread and had caused a lot of issues. So we've or we haven't done any fixes yet, but we have torn away all this plywood and taken out the floor of this head. This is going to be quite a big job because if you look at the size of the woods that are used on these boats, these are going to have to be replaced. We even had mushrooms growing in this room. That's how humid it was. If you follow me into here, this is our living room. This is also an amazing room because not always will we have the nice weather or the ability to be sitting outside. On my right, on your left, we have a massive sofa which used to be facing a television which is not there anymore. This can also be used as a bed and has infinite possibilities with all this space behind it. Under these cushions we have access to our 12 volt battery chargers currently full of sawdust and our inverter. This is actually a little boiler that came with the boat. We are not sure how or where we will use this, but we'll see later if we use it. The other side of this cushion is identical. It's just used as storage at the moment, but later on, I know that these have massive potential. Over here, more storage, more storage, more storage, more storage with loads of potential as well, which is amazing. Under the floor where I'm standing right now, all these boards are easily removed to access the hydraulic system, electrics, the bilge. Uh, you can see the keel and the boards from here as well. So this is pretty cool as well. Very easily accessible floor. And I really love these planks as well. Have a look at the thickness of these floorboards. They are also very nicely designed. It's nice. I think it's joinery where you put a piece of wood inside another wood to give it another tint. So you really love that. Moving forwards in this boat, on the right you have bedroom number two. We give them names. Number one, the biggest. Number two, medium room cabin. And number three is the smallest cabin. Heading into here, there is enough room to fit two people. I'm not going to keep explaining what we did with our walls. We just removed all the plywood and exposed a lot of bad wood. But anyway, this is a double person room with plenty of space, plenty of storage and has its own head with shower, loo and a tap with again more storage under it. Under this bed, we have one of our four water tanks of, I would assume about 200 liters. If it's not 200 liters, it's massive anyway. Moving back, we have our, you can down the stairs a bit further on, on the left, we have bedroom cabin number three, which is our smallest one. I would still call it a two person cabin. One person will have a slightly less comfortable night than the other but it can definitely fit more people. This used to actually be a bunk bed, which is quite handy to fit more people, but imagine sleeping here with someone next to you and someone on top. It would be a bit claustrophobic. It would be nice to have that again, but we'd have to open some more natural light and freshness. This is cabin number three. That leaves us only one more cabin to look at, and that is the master suite, or cabin number one. MP, can you translate this for me? Nadie es perfecto excepto el capitán. No one is perfect except for the capitán. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. This is cabin number one. It has a massive double bed, which has currently got the tent on, which covers this whole housing area, which is what those big poles are used for and a rope between two mats. But that's this. It's massive, so we just stored it here for now. And the mattress from this is the one that's on the roof. It has so much potential. At the moment, it's quite empty. Same here. 
we want to expose all the walls first, expose as much of the hull as possible first, so we can work on it. And once the structure of the boat is in place, we can start looking at how to put furniture in without covering the walls of the boat too much. This room has a ton of storage as well, not only down the side, but has wardrobes or cupboards here, hangers and storage back there. And last little room of the boat is our last head. One loo, tap, and a 220 volt shower, which we will probably have to change because where do you get 220 volts in the middle of the sea without using an inverse? While we're here, I want to show you a massive advantage as well as a disadvantage of boats, of this boat in particular, and boats that were built in Bahia, the province in the northeast of Brazil. Have a look at the size of these frames, right? The massive advantage they are currently everything that is wood in this boat was covered. So I'm gonna also expose all this wood, it's quite solid. So anyway, the advantage of having frames this big is if there is rot, there will still be a lot of good wood left over for structure. The disadvantage is if you want to replace one of these, it requires a lot of wood to replace. So is that a good or a bad thing? It's probably a very good thing to get us sailing over here. It's probably a very bad thing if someone comes and tells us we need to replace a few of these. So let's see about that. I would also like to mention that each of our cabins or every single room in this boat, as a matter of fact, has access to a 12 volt light and a 220 volt light. If we are going to keep these or not, we are not sure. Right now it's been amazing for us because on land we just used 220 and out of water we used 12. It does require a whole second electric system though, so let's see what we do about that. This is where I would like to wrap up the boat tour. Engine. you guys thought we forgot about the engine room, we didn't. Let's go down there right now. There are actually two entrances to this engine room. We'll show you the main entrance first, the second entrance, which is just under the kitchen, galley, whatever, is actually where you access most of the electrics. I'm actually going to just flick on a light so we can see it better in the engine room, but this is the second entrance to the engine room. Okay, let's head down. This is our reliable engine. It's a Mercedes-Benz 352A diesel turbo. These engines are very common here in Brazil in boats like fishing boats and so on, just because they are easy to handle, easy to maintain easy to work on because they're so all the parts on the outside are exposed very nicely and they are very reliable behind me here we have two water tanks water tank one and two made out of fiberglass and behind that we have another diesel tank on the behind you guys if you turn around you can see there is a bunch of space this space used to be used to store our water maker on this roof and a bunch of other things which we can probably manage to tidy up and use this space a lot better than before but for now it's just a lot of open space. On your right you have what looks like an old water or a liquid tank which has been cut out and convert it into some battery holders. As a matter of fact, this boat used to have 16 12 volt batteries to power all the 220 volt uh, appliances over the inver inverser. Enough of this part of the engine room for now. We are going to head up and over into the other part of the engine room, which is on the other side of the engine and the exhaust. So let's go. 
So let's head into this second smaller entrance. I really like the fact that this is here because sometimes it's just difficult while you're sailing or even standing still to have to lean over engines and under hoses to reach another part. It's also for safety reasons we can lock that massive hatch and come up in this one and lock the boat from the outside so no one can access the engine room or the boat. So let's head down. So before we were on the other side of the engine over there, now we're on this side of the engine. I really like it, like I said before, that we can access the engine from the other side. Here on the port side of the boat, we have the battery connect, uh, the solar panel battery chargers, one for the 24 volt system and one for the 12 volt system, as well as our diesel filter. Behind these, we have another diesel tank and next to that we have our batteries how does this work as you can see we know that having batteries and electrics in the engine room is not a good place to have them at all that will be changed because these are not going to last very long here we have a 12 volt 12 volt 12 volt 12 volt 12 volt and two more 12 volts top left which are connected to each other to create a 24 volt system the one thing I love the most about our engine room is you can fit a stool nicely on these boards and work easily on this engine, replacing parts, checking parts, and so on. I don't know if you saw in the back, there were lots more of these boards because they are currently all taken out for now because we needed to be able to check the hull during our sailing trip any other day all these planks would be nicely laid out so the floor of this engine room is very solid and easy to stand on. I'm not going to spend any more time in this room I've had it in this engine room for now I need a break so let's go up and wrap this tour up. <laughs> Most importantly shut these hatches because somebody on this boat forgot to shut that hatch while I was making pancakes and I fell straight through it. Poor pancake. This was the tour of our boat. We hope you enjoyed this. And Pete's pretending to be taller than she is. That was the tour of Yaba from the inside. I'm sure it doesn't end. I'm sure it won't end here because you're going to be seeing a lot in the next videos as well us changing stuff on the hull, modifying electrics, modifying hydraulic systems, fixing things, destroying things. Mainly. Mainly. This is the last time your bubble will look like this. The works are starting tomorrow and it's time for us to sort out stuff. Yeah. So we wanted to do that tour now because from this your bubble will only start getting better. Of course it will look messy and we're still going to break a lot of things but everything that we do from now on is to make it a better place. So let's make a mess. We would like to finish this video by sending a huge thank you to all the people who are supporting us on our dream. Charles. Poop. Scott. Steve. Tim. Virgilio. Rich Dennis Craig Joel Jamie Oh, that's not supposed to happen <laughs> Let's try again then Jamie And Peter